Hi guys, welcome back to In Case of Econ Struggles. Welcome to another sequential market struggle. This is part four where we're starting to add fiscal policy into the model. So what's changed from those previous models is that now we're starting to add fiscal policy. We're adding in government, which means we're adding in taxes. And so I just want to take a couple minutes and talk about how the setup for that works. So timestamps are below if you would like to jump around, but let's go ahead and get right into it. Just really basic goals and outcomes for this video. We're gonna add government and bonds into the sequential market equilibrium. We're gonna talk about what the new definition of a sequential market is. We're gonna talk about the maximization problem in this new model, and then we're gonna update the constraints in the problem. So first, let's go back to the world of coconuts with Bill and Dave on this island. Now, a lot of things about Bill and Dave are gonna be exactly the same. They still have a utility function, which is just the natural log of their coconuts. They still have an endowment, which varies with time. They can still trade assets with each other, priced at RT. But now we're introducing Aaron. And what Aaron is going to do is Aaron is going to act like the government. And so first of all, Aaron's gonna collect taxes. So Bill and Dave are both gonna to have to pay an amount T for tax to Aaron. And the other thing that Aaron is gonna do is she is gonna be able to sell and buy government bonds just to make it easy. We're gonna say Dave has been the chosen one. He's the only one who's allowed to buy and sell bonds but with Aaron. And so Dave can pay Aaron QT BT plus one in order to buy some bonds for tomorrow. And Aaron will give bonds to Dave today. Again, taxes, the price of bonds, bonds, it's all in terms of coconuts. We're not dealing with any dollars. So if I've gotta pay a tax of two, that means I'm paying two coconuts. If Aaron owes Dave two coconuts worth of bonds, his BT would be two. Again, just no money involved. So now let's talk about how their problem changes. So for Bill's problem, it's going to be almost exactly the same. He's still trying to maximize his lifetime utility, could choose how many coconuts to eat, how many assets to borrow or lend in any given period. But now in his budget constraint, he's going to pay a tax to Aaron, and we're going to call that TTB. Now, on the other hand, Dave's problem is also going to look almost exactly the same just with those taxes, still choosing consumption and assets. But now we have a third player, and our third player is Aaron. Aaron, we're gonna say, doesn't really have an objective. The only point of Aaron is to balance the budget. So all Aaron needs to do is she needs to make sure that the bonds that she pays to Dave have to be equal to the total revenue she has and any revenue that she gets from selling the bonds. And all that really means is Aaron just needs to make sure this equation is true because that just means how many bonds she's lending or holding from Dave. And so what Aaron is going to be useful for is that if Bill and Dave happen to get into a situation where they have really low endowment, they both have really low endowment, well, if they have really low endowment, there's really no room for any lending because both of them just don't have that many coconuts. But with Aaron, what Aaron can do, Aaron can basically sell a bond to Dave in order to increase how many coconuts Dave has today. And Dave can take one of those coconuts and he can loan them to Bill so that Bill doesn't have to eat zero coconuts. Bill can actually eat a coconut. And then in time T plus one, when Bill has high endowment, he gets to repay Bill for that coconut that he lent him yesterday. So Dave gets a little bit of interest money Dave gets to turn around and pay back Aaron for the bond that he borrowed yesterday. And so basically what happens is Aaron can help if there's a period in which both Bill and Dave have a really low endowment. And it can basically help Bill and Dave increase their utility through this availability of bonds. Now, just to revisit this market clearing, we're still gonna have a goods market clearing. Our asset market clearing before used to be zero. It used to be that our asset market had to completely clear but now it doesn't because Aaron can basically fill any deficit or any imbalance in the asset market with these government bonds. And so imbalance in the asset market is possible because it's gonna be covered by Aaron who's fulfilling the role of the government. And that's basically how that's gonna work. Now we can keep going we can derive this equilibrium. Again, it's a competitive equilibrium. It's gonna be an allocation given prices, solving maximization problems subject to market clearing. And so we see the same thing here. It's an allocation, consumption, assets, government bonds going to Dave. Given the prices of both bonds and assets, it's gonna solve Bill and Dave's utility maximization problem. And it's gonna satisfy both the goods market and the asset market in every single period. And that's really all there is to it. Again, the math is gonna get a little more complicated when we start playing around with this model. 
but I really wanna make sure the setup is clear before we get into it. So if these videos are helping you out, please let me know in the comments. Also let me know if you've got questions or concerns or you're not really sure what's happening. But if these videos in general are helping you out, please like and subscribe. We'll see you next time for another case of Econ Struggles.